Hey everybody, um, I, uh, I I had a video that I did. Uh, I guess it was probably last week. Um, although with how I upload the videos, it might be, it might show up as two weeks ago. Um, uh, that was talking about eight reasons uh, why you're having bike uh, pain while riding your bike, what to do about it. Uh, we looked at you know the size of the bike. We looked at you know as far as diet and, and stretches and that kind of stuff. We looked at you know whether you were fitting the bike correctly as far as high, how high your seat should be, how far backwards and forwards it should be. We looked at a lot of different things like that, and there were there were eight of them. And I just wanted to, to bring up two more that I think are important um, that I, I I neglected to mention in the last video. Hopefully it'll be helpful uh, to you and help you to get over some of that back pain. Now number one. Um, if your bike seat is tilted, okay, so you can raise your bike seat up and down on that on that on that metal piece on that on the on the stand where the where the seat is connected to, okay, it's the post I think is what it's called. Um, you can move the seat forwards or backwards on that post, okay. But then there's a third thing that you can do with the seat. Now, a lot of people don't know this, and sometimes you'll when you're adjusting your seat forward or backwards or up or down, you'll accidentally move this and not even know that you did it. So let me just kind of clue you in here, okay? Your seat can tilt like this or like this, okay? Typically, you want it set to, I think they call it a, a zero bearing or something like that. Anyways, level. That, that's that's the whatever they call it. I, I forget what they call it, but whatever they call it, you want it set to level. Okay, where when you're sitting on it, it's not tilted forward or backwards. There are some professionals who have it tilted like, you know, way forward or backward. Okay, whatever. You know, you're probably not a professional if you're watching this. I mean, <laughs> why would you be listening to me if you if you were a professional, you know? Uh, but anyways, um, and so sometimes when you're, tilt when you're moving your seat backwards or forwards, you can accidentally increase or decrease the tilt of the seat. I did this on one of my bikes and it was super uncomfortable. I was like, man. I really feel like I'm falling forward, and my wrists hurt really bad. Like, why is this? And then, and then I looked at it, and my seat's like this. I'm like, oh. When I moved it forward, or actually, I moved it backwards. When I moved it backwards, I accidentally moved it like when I was pushing, and I went like, kind of like that. Ah, ah. So here's the thing. Um, some bikes have little notches in in the thing, in the in the seat post, where when you move it, it only moves however far that notch is, like the one tilt. But then others, like um, on most of the road bikes I've seen actually, um, have it where you can change the increment by less than those notches. So you can tilt it forward or backwards however much you want uh, to give yourself just a slight tilt or slight lean back or whatever. Okay. Um, I've seen, for instance, on mountain bikers where they sometimes move their seat like this so that when they're sitting they have more of a, I guess, more of a grip for when they lower themselves down to their seat. I don't really understand why they do that, be though, because, you know, in mountain biking, you're usually standing up when you're going downhill, so I, I don't really understand that, but I'm not a, I'm not a mountain biker. I'm a road biker, so, <laughs> you know, I, I don't have to know that stuff. Anyways, when, when, when you've got your seat, if you've got it tilted like this or like this instead of even, and typically you want it even. There's some situations, but typically you're gonna want it even. Um, and when when you have that, it's gonna it's gonna really feel weird. Okay, if you have it tilted forward, it's gonna feel like you're falling out, right? And if you have it backwards, you're like, eh. and once again, typically if you're leaning too far forward or things are too far forward, you're gonna feel more wrist pain, and when it's back, you're gonna feel more back pain. But like I said, there's lots of in Latin the 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 eight reason video. Um, there's lots of reasons why you're going to have pain and, and back pain, for instance, if you're just sitting there on your bike all day, especially road biking where you're all leaning forward so far, you know, in road bikes, you sit really far like this and, you know, mountain bikes, you, not, not so much and city bikes and eh, not really so much either. Um, you know, but you're sitting there all day and it, yeah, it's going to cause a lot of back pain. You know, that's just, <laughs> that's just going to happen. Like <laughs> you have to, you have to just come to grips with that. And if you're just sitting there all day, you know, it's going to be worse. So if you stand up out of your saddle, you know, and that's one of the things I talked, or seat, sorry. The, biking refers to the seat as the saddle, sorry. Um, when you stand up out of the seat, uh, you know, and that's going to help your back pain. <laughs> but obviously having your seat where it's not, where it's not tilted forward or backwards is going to help a lot. Um, definitely. And if you can't get it right, if you don't know how to level it off, if you don't have a leveler, if you don't know how to level it correctly, just bring it to a professional bike worker, okay? The, a shop or something, okay? They're going to know 
they're they're gonna know how to fix it and you can just tell them look i was trying to adjust things things didn't go well and I, 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 they can actually probably help you with your adjustment um usually there, there's a fee but if you have bought the bike from them sometimes they'll do it for free or sometimes it'll be like they'll give you free service for like a, a year or whatever um but now is not really the best time to buy, buy bikes because the, there's just a, a shortage of, of things with the shipping and all, ugh, all that, um, you know, and then prices are up and everything. So it's, it's not really the best time to get involved with buying a bike. But uh, either way, the bike shops are still open and they, they should be able to help you with this if, if you got it really messed up and you can't figure out how to get past it. The second thing I wanted to mention, besides the seat tilting forward or backwards, is... Um, caused by the road friction okay you might say now what are you talking about okay so when you're riding over a road you're gonna have friction that happens it's gonna go up the bike and it's gonna hit you somewhere okay um, if you're going on a bumpy thing for instance and your arms are locked in you're gonna feel everything and it's gonna it's gonna work its way up and you're gonna have head pain or neck pain right um, if you loosen your arms or whatever, but you really grip, blah, 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 well, it's going to hurt your butt or it's going to hurt your hands or, you know, whatever. It, it, you're going to find it's going to filter up somewhere. Okay. This even goes for road biking. Sometimes you'll be on uh, road biking and it'll be a real nice, smooth, smooth road. And then you'll get somewhere else. And it's like, I don't know. It's like this gravel pavement mixture stuff. I don't exactly know what it is, but real bumpy. And when you have thinner tires, you feel every single thing. The wider tires you get, the the better it'll feel, but the slower you'll go. Typically, unless it's in a in a road that isn't completely smooth, then it doesn't. You know what? This is a conversation for another day. Anyways, more of the story being, um, when you are riding on a road um, or a trail or whatever, you're gonna have friction that goes up and it's gonna work somewhere in your body, right? And there's uh, one common cause is, is, is hand pain or common consequence of this is hand pain. Uh, and one thing that really helps that is wearing gloves. Um, when you wear gloves, especially the, the, the padded ones, not just any gloves, I'm talking about the padded biking gloves, it'll help you when you when you hit those bumps to not feel it as bad and it won't, you won't wear out so fast. Um, and like I said, another, another quick solution to this is getting the right bike tire. Um, just because you have a road bike doesn't mean you have to run like, what are those, 25s or whatever. Um, I use 28 on that, that road bike right here. I use 28s. Um, the, my new road bike, which still hasn't come in yet, it's still being delayed. Like, I, I bought it like a year or two, I don't know, I, I, I guess last year. And it's going to get here like next year, hopefully. <laughs> Anyways, that one has 32s. Um, I have a Trek Dual Sport over there, right there. And it has... Um, I want to say 40s. I think it's 40s on it. Um, and then I have a um, a mountain uh, a mountain bike uh, that has um, just you know fatter tires. And then they have those bikes that have like the fat bikes, you know. <sighs> Wider tires will slow you down, and obviously your bike won't be able to fit any tire on it. You you kind of have to do some research here. But typically, the narrower your tire is, the more you're gonna feel the bumps. Um, and if you're using a bike that's not meant for what you're doing, it's going to be harder. Like if you take a mountain bike out road biking, it's not going to be fun. That's just that's just not going to be fun. It's going to be very miserable. If you try to take a road bike off road, <laughs> super not fun. Um, road bikes don't have any suspension. You know, if you look at the front here at this bike right here, it's just a straight line. If you look at the dual sport, it has these shocks right here. That's suspension, okay? Um, if you're on a bike that does not have suspension and you are riding on a bumpy road, it's not going to be a good time. So you've got gloves. you got the right bike for the right job, right? You've got tire size. These are all things that help with bumpy roads and road friction. Um, another thing is you can plan a different route. <laughs> um, you can... Um, there's not much you can do about road friction. It's something that you're going to have to lessen the effects because you can't make the road better. I mean, hypothetically, I guess you could tear it up and redo it, but you probably don't have thousands and thousands of dollars just sitting around. So I'm going to assume that you're not going to just like, hey, um, the city in which I live, I'm going to pay for this thing to get redone. You're probably not going to do that. So, uh, you know, I hope that this helps. Uh, but those those uh, those two things are really big uh, factors to, to, to pain when you're writing. Um, having your seat tilted and not knowing it, um, for instance, if you bought the bike used and the person thought that they were like, I don't know, 
there's always that person who buys a bike and they think that they're like, oh, I know what I'm doing, and then they screw it up, you know, well, you know, obviously, that happens. Um, or sometimes when you buy it from the shop, they'll be in too big of a hurry to set it up right. Sometimes it happens, that typically happens with Walmart bikes over, like, professional bikes, but it can still happen. Um, and then the, the bumpy roads, you know, any, any kind of road friction, and you're going to feel that. Another thing you can do is when you're riding, um, you just take your hand off. Practice driving or riding with, without your hands, and that's going to be hard, so you're going to have to, you know, at first go little and then just go more and more. Go Practice going one-handed so that you can grab your water bottle while you're riding and stuff instead of having to stop every time. Um, that, that gets kind of tired. Um, I, um, I biked my first... Um, it's called a century ride this year, so 100 miles, right? And I biked my first one this year, excuse me. And if I had to stop every single time that I took a drink of water, that would have been super annoying. Um, because on the whole way back, the wind picked up. And so, like, that, you know, 50 miles back or whatever, it was just straight headwind. And I was going around a mountain, so finally the road starts to curve, and I'm like, oh, thank God, I'm going to break the wind. The wind was going with the flow of the mountain, so no matter which way I went on this road, it was headwind. I was like, are you joking? So my speed went down from, I think it was like um, uh, 18 or 20 miles per hour, somewhere in there, and it was supposed to be easier coming back, right? It was not. My speed was down to like 10 in parts, and I think in one part it went down to 8 miles per hour. It was super miserable. Uh, my wife was all like, do you want me to just you know, pick you up in the car and we can just go home. And I was like, no, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do my first century. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be glorious. And I remember it. And no matter how bad my next century is, I'm going to remember how bad that ride was and how I owned it. Um, anyways, and uh, uh, so those two things, you fix those and that should help you uh, with a lot of your pain. Um, like I said in the last video, there are other reasons for pain uh, while riding. Uh, it it should not be excessively painful to ride your bike. Um, that that should not be a thing. So uh, I, I hope that uh, one of these ten solutions that we've looked at in this video and in the previous video will help point you in the right direction to get that fixed, and you can have more more fun on your bike. But I would like to offer one more thing, um, and this really isn't related to those things. But I noticed that. The quality of the bike will come out when you're riding. This bike right here is the lowest end Trek road bike you can get. Okay, it's called the Damani AL2. That is the 2020 model or something like that. Maybe the 21 model. I don't remember. Anyways, um, it's, you know, a year or two old, and uh, it you can feel the difference. Uh, before that, I had a uh, Walmart bike. I don't remember what the brand for Walmart is, maybe Huffy or something. I don't, I don't know, whatever it is. Um, and it was fun because I liked biking, but it, it was good for a kid who was just trying to get around, you know, and I, I had a lot of fond memories on that bike. But I never went on really long rides, um, and I guess what I'm saying is I can feel the difference between riding one of my treks and riding a Walmart bike. So, you know, I, I'm i not trying to, like, make fun of your bike. You know, if the bike that you have is, is, is what you can afford, then that's fine. You know, there, there's, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. But there is going to be a difference that you feel riding a name brand bike and riding a Walmart bike. So, you know, maybe look for a used used Trek or a used Specialized or a used Cannondale or something like that if you can't afford a new one that, that's totally understandable. Things are expensive. I, I get that. But if you really want to have a fun time, you might want to think about upgrading the brand of, of your bike. That's, uh, that's something that you just have to come to grips with. You know, um, there's a reason <laughs> why it costs a little more. Um, and... Um, so, okay, I hope that this was helpful for you, and uh, try out those solutions. See if it works. If it doesn't work, um, you know, uh, leave a comment. Maybe I can help you figure it out, uh, or take it to a bike shop. Uh, maybe they can help you figure it out. Um, either way, biking should be a very enjoyable experience, and I hope that it is for you. Um, get these kinks worked out, and I'm sure, I'm sure it will be. Um, okay, see ya.